What's going on, everyone? Seventh graders, how are we doing today? I hope you guys are doing well. Well, today is Friday, and this is our writing assignment day, and you're going to be writing. Yes. So how are we going to do this? Well, I will tell you. But before I go into the lesson and the assignment, I want to tell you that there are three ways for you to turn in your assignments this week. Three ways. Number one. Google Classroom. I just created a Google Classroom in Seattle and it is amazing. I don't know why I have never done it before. It's awesome. It's one place where you log into Google Classroom and you can look at all the assignments that we assign you and you can turn it in there. Simple. And I'm able to get it. It's probably the easiest way for you to turn it in. So I strongly suggest you do it that way. But if you can't do it that way, by any means, it's totally okay. You can do it the second way, which is taking a picture of your work and sending it through your mind. It comes to me like a text message. So that's fine. Take a picture of your work and send it to your mind. And last but not least, you can do it the old traditional way, as we all know, through email or Google Docs. So you can just type it up, write it up, take a picture, send it through Google Docs or through my email. That's a simple way, okay? And that's how I'll be accepting your work for the next couple of weeks while we are here at our homes away, <laughs> okay? So I do want to cover something. I want to cover uh, uh, our story. So today you're going to be doing a writing assignment. Before we go into the writing assignment, I want to go over just a review and a summary of everything we read while reading Raymond's Run. Let's shout out Squeaky. Squeaky is a... Really? Squeaky is a fast runner. All right? It's so amazing that the trash people want to pick up the trash while I'm recording. I'll wait. All right, let's summarize, shall we? Let's do it. So, as we know, Raymond's One is a story written by none other than Tony, Casca uh, Tony Cade Bambara. Now, this is a small read from a longer read, as you may know. Um, it actually comes from a bigger read uh, called Gorilla, My Love, which was written in 1990. Um, so, this pretty much story is pretty centered around our main character named Squeaky. Now, Squeaky got this name because her voice was so high-pitched. But Squeaky had a love for running. She was like the super fast runner and she loved running. Um, Squeaky's real name we also know is to be Hazel Elizabeth Deborah Parker. Okay, she grew up in Harlem. And the things that she really loves is just running. But she also has to take care of her handicapped older brother, Raymond. So Raymond also, we know, I don't like to, maybe, maybe he has, we won't, maybe we won't call him a handicap, we'll say maybe he has some disabilities, um, as the book has described. Now, she knows that she's, uh, what she's doing, and it's completely okay with telling everyone, and will tell everybody that she's the fastest runner out there. She's super fast, she runs super quick, she's, she shows off, she doesn't, she doesn't mind. You know, but she's like, you know, she knows it comes with hard work. She knows that she has to put in the work in order for her to be successful. She knows that she has to work hard. And one thing that she can't stand is people like Gretchen, who pretty much makes it seem like, oh, no, I don't need to practice. No, I don't need to worry about anything. I'm good. I'm fine. Right? So it was time for the Maypole. The Maypole is the biggest track meet they have every year. And she's excited about it. And because she's excited about this Maypole, she knows that she wants to win. Now, as she gets ready for the Maypole, um, you know, she's telling everyone, you know, that she has the fastest feet, um, she, but she isn't confident in her, her ability um, to do everything. For example, like the dancing portion, you know, um, she isn't confident in her ability to complete the dancing task before her and instead sticks with wanting to run, which she knows she can do. So she's like, okay, dancing might not be my thing, but I know I can for sure run. Right? So the day before the festival, Squeaky runs into her main competition, Gretchen, and Gretchen's two friends. They kind of talk about her, like, oh, you know we're going to win. You're not going to win, blah, 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 blah. The thing that really gets under Gretchen's, um, not Gretchen's, Squeaky's uh, skin is the fact that people are always talking about her brother. People are always talking about her brother because of his disability. And, you know, she's like, I'm a fighter. I don't care. You know, I will fight you. I'm not for all the talking. I will fight you because my brother is the person that I love and he's someone that I truly, 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 truly care about. Um, and so, um, as they line up for the race, Squeaky sees Raymond line up as well on the side of the race. And I think that was the most beautiful part to me in the story because it just shows that Raymond really just looks up to her and he's watching her. You know, um, even though she's the youngest, 
he watches everything she does, and she's supposed to be responsible for him, you know, she's supposed to be the one that actually looks out for him, and so, you know, he starts running too, and she's reminded when he would keep up with her when she, when she practiced, he would do this, he would follow along with her, and so she also thinks about how it could be, how it can make him a good runner, how he could be great in the end, and how strong he can be, and things like that. And so the race ends, and even though Squeaky thinks she has won, the judges have to have a conference to determine who the winner is. And so in the meantime, Raymond climbs over the fence that had separated him from his sister to join her. While they waited for the announcement, Squeaky thinks about how she's going to change her ways a little bit and spend more time focusing on helping her brother by coaching him to be the best runner he could be. Eventually, she finds out that she's the winner, um, and Gretchen actually is nice enough to congratulate her in the end, and, you know, she receives her prize, and, you know, and, you know, she wants to see if Gretchen can actually help her coach her brother, and that's how the story pretty much ends, you know? Um, and it's such a beautiful piece of the story. I think the story really shows, like, strength, integrity, and also inclusive inclusivity. You know, when we talk about inclusion and inclusivity, it's including people, including people from all backgrounds, all, um, like I said, races, religions, genders, um, genders, um, sexual orientations, political beliefs. That's including everyone, learning abilities. You know, and it demonstrates those things. I think that was the most amazing thing about this story. I loved it. Um, so. That was your summary. So now let's get into what you need to do. So you're going to be writing two to three paragraphs. I would say let's write two. You think you can do two? You think you can do two? Let's do two. So write two paragraphs. Um, six to eight cents. No, five to six each. I'm not gonna make it hard. Five to six sentences each, and what I want you to do when you when you um, when you write these um, paragraphs, you're going to answer three questions. These three questions are the three questions that the state of California expects every seventh grader to know when they are reading and writing. First, the central idea. Okay, what is the central idea of the story? Right. What is which means pretty much the main idea. What is the main focus? What is the the idea that the story is centered around? Right. Then the second question is, what is the author's purpose? What does the author want us to know? What does the author want us to get out of this reading? What does the author want us to get out of this, this learning? And then lastly, what schemas and connections can we make to that? All right? How can we connect our schemas and our relations to the story? Now, we know that schema is talking about textual connections. Three things. Text to text. How does the story connect to another text? Text to self. How does the story connect to you? Text to world. How does the story connect to the world around us? What in history have connected with the text? What are some things that actually happened in the world that connects to the text that we're reading? <clears throat> okay? So, mister, how do we do this without an example? Let me give it to you. So, let's take a simple story. Hmm? Shall we? What story shall I do? Cinderella, Pinocchio, or Goldilocks and Three Bears. I got it. We're going to do Cinderella. <laughs> All right, so if I were to be writing two paragraphs about Cinderella, we know Cinderella is a sad stepdaughter who lived with her stepmother because her stepfather died, her, her actual father died, and she lived with her stepmother and her evil two sisters. Once she lived with those two sisters, they make her clean, they treat her very bad, she meets the fairy godmother, they go to this ball, her fairy godmother dresses her up, gives her these nice shoes, and then she goes off to the ball, meets the prince, and the prince falls in love with her, but she has to leave by the time the, the clock strikes 12, and she runs off, she loses her shoe, the prince goes back and says, I'm going to find whatever the girl I love, I'm going to find the girl I love, and how am I going to do that? I'm going to find if the shoe fits her foot. He goes on to every single girl, he gives her the right shoe, he finds that it fits the foot of Cinderella, they fall in love, and that is his wife to the end of time. Alright, brief summary. So, when I'm focusing on my first paragraph, I'm looking at my central idea and then my second paragraph is going to focus on the author's purpose. And then I, what I will do, what you could do, is add 
your schemas. Add your connections to those paragraphs. Follow me. I'm going to give you the example. We just did Cinderella, right? Let's say we're doing Cinderella as an example. I'm talking about the central idea of the story is Cinderella finding her true love regardless of her family makeup, right? She finds her true love um, and she marries the prince even though she's experienced, you know, abuse or disrespect from her stepmother and her stepsisters and she lives happily ever after, right? That's our focus of the story. That's the meat. That's the meat and the potatoes of the story. Now I'm going to connect it. I can connect it to myself where I felt like I was maybe a Cinderella in my life, right? Where I didn't have much money. I didn't have a lot and I didn't think I can go to college. And then eventually, you know, I was blessed with this amazing scholarship and, you know, and finances and grades and people that believed in me and I lived happily ever after. That could be my connection. And then when I go into my author's purpose, the purpose of the author might want, might have wanted us to know, I don't know. Would, I would say the, the author of Cinderella would like us to know that hard times does not last forever. That even though your life is set up in the most hardest and most stressful times, great things can come after all, right? And you can go on with those things for two to th maybe three to four sentences, and then I'll make my connection maybe to the world, another text. If I make a connection to another text, I'll talk about another text that I like that was very similar to that. Um, Sleeping Beauty, and I can connect it to that, or I can connect it to, uh, you know, anything, right? And so you're going to do that with the story. Got it? Good? Capiche? Questions? You can always write me questions of remind, and we'll, um, I'll answer them as soon as I can, because work is due tomorrow, well, today. I know I posted 10 a.m. today, but, um, at least by the end of the day, at least by 3.30, when school technically is out, have it in. All right. I hope that explains things to you better. Um, if you, if your parents approve, um, and you need a little extra help, I'm free for tutoring. I'm free for phone calls. Give me a call. Text me. You know, say, hey, my mom would like you to text me or uh, reach out because I'm confused, and I'll call your parents and we will talk three ways to go over your paper again, or to go over any assignments, or to to tutor you to go over some of the things that we've been doing and I'm available. I'm available between the hours of 10 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Uh, reach out. I will answer. I will text you. I will call your parents if need be and we can make it work. Okay? Have a great day. Love you for real. Peace.